I don't know yet if I want to get this one or this one. I like this one because it has a bigger cargo hold. But it has less crew. Hmm. It also can hold two of the... Uh, we could have like a drill and a cargo hold extension. Oh, I don't know, man. Wait a second. It's free to switch between them once you buy one of them? Wait, are you serious? You can change ships for the difference in price? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Okay, well, damn. So we don't even have to choose. Well, that's great. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, where to next? Um, we have to go to London to go to London. Oh, let's go to the nature reserve area. All right, that's what we're doing next. So I think the nature reserve area is over here. I think. Let's go. Let's go check that area out. Oh, so now we do this. So that's my that's my light gun, and this is my heavy gun. Thump. But that also does, like, over twice the damage of my other guns, so. Oh, we gotta stop in Port of Vaughn for the Carpenter. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do that right now. Maybe the quest fixed itself today, too. We'll have to see. Oh, I didn't get crew. That's okay. That's okay. 7 out of 10 is fine. We just need to be careful with them. Hey, Bloody Mad Fox. What's up, bud? Urkinikoff, you could have dropped the filmmaker in New Winchester. Oh shoot, you're absolutely right. Let's do that before we go. Good call, good call. I definitely needed to do that. Yep. Yeah. Is Frostpunk tomorrow? No, Frostpunk is Tuesday. We're gonna finish up Metro Last Light and play more of this tomorrow. Yep. Hey, Sir Shave, uh, Shaves a lot, what's up, man? What quest was bugged? Um, I got this quest, I got a quest to go do something at Port of Vaughn and then like my, my the map switched sides, and uh, I think it messed up the quest, because when I went to Port of Vaughn, I couldn't do anything. And actually, let's play this safe. I want to buy another supply, just, just to make absolutely sure. All right. Drop off Madame Lumiere. 100 sovereigns, an occurrence, your the day of the premiere quality is now 167. Okay. Cool. And apparently she invited us to a premiere. Let's go ahead and repair to fully repair the hull. That's going to cost 15. I think we can do that. And then we can't get crew yet, can we? Oh, we can! Bam! Max crew. Okay, great. Alright, let's go. Oh, it's pronounced Avon? Thanks, Revan. Okay. Any Kenji coming up soon? Um, right now, Sunless Skies is kind of taking the spot that I would play Kenji. So, not right now, but... I, I do love Kenshi, and I'm by no means done with that game. There's a lot left for me to do in Kenshi, so I, I will most likely return at some point. I really want to continue our robotic ninja run, because that run is going really well. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun in that run. So, one day. One day. How am I finding this game so far, TBN? Uh, I'm loving it, dude. A lot of fun. Do I ever put out a schedule of future games? Uh, Thunder Hatter, I very rarely do schedules, because... I'm in this very weird and unique job where I have to follow my whims, essentially. Like, I, I tried to put schedules and have fixed days per week and stuff like that. And one of the worst things that can happen as a streamer is if you announce that you're going to play a game oh, in a week. And then leading up to the days, you find another game you really like or something else you want to do. And then being put in this position where you're supposed to entertain people playing a game that you don't really want to play. And that sucks. 
I've been there many, many times, and it sucks. So, uh, what I've learned is, unfortunately, I don't really have that much of a schedule, um, unless it's like Metro Exodus, because, uh, you know, like, I know I'm going to have a huge amount of fun with that, so I know I'm playing that on Friday at 8.30 in the morning. But outside of that kind of stuff, it's it's tough. It's it's just too, too many gotchas, you know? Uh, trade a Sky Story for supplies? Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Hell yeah. Great. Uh, the second charity reward stream, I have the 3DS, but I have not yet, not yet configured it to work. I need to do that. And, um, yeah. The second charity reward stream, I'm hoping, will be sometime, like, after the Metro Anthem Far Cry stuff calms down, that I'm hoping to get a time up for the uh, second charity reward stream. Yep. I spent a bunch of money on this 3DS, though, so it's going to happen sometime soon. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Port of On. Commission the reclusive carpenter to repair the magician's equipment. The carpenter squints at the letter and gives a quiet harumph. Another one? Fine. Looks like I'll need a scribe spinster. Yes, yes, the whole thing dead, of course. Okay. Um. Let's buy some cheap fuel. Sure. Now we are super set for exploring. Share some gossip with the locals? Sure. Let's do it again. Oh, write a port report. There's a nice free hundred gold. Um, Alright, is this going to work now? Yes! It is going to work! Uh, attacking men have been seen enter the ruins of the Dead of Night armed with shovels and lanterns. You wait until the sky is dark and the distant stars have dimmed before making your way to the ruins. You go alone, bearing only a shuttered lantern. Dust rises underfoot as you tread along the shadowed halls, greater and gloomier than the manners of old London. Through gaps between stones, narrower than the inside of a coffin. Voices grow near, voices and a rich, resplendent light. The luminous glow of brilliant souls mined from the ruins infects this hidden habitation with radiance. A group of heavy-set men and women in hobnail boots are just ahead. They were they are intent not on the deposits of souls, but on the hollows amidst the stones, where they are busy burying caches of munitions. A crunch of stone behind you, a beam of lantern light. The burly McDonald brothers have followed you in. Warn the Tacades. If they're discovered, they'll be booted off Port of Vaughn. You rush into the breach, startling the illegal miners. A chorus of surprise and alarm greets your sudden entrance, but there's no time for questions. You convince the leader, a hard-bitten ex-prospector, to lead her men out through an alternate escape route blasted into the ruins. You cut an expensive deal and stay behind to tell McDonald's you were a one on a nighttime stroll when you stumbled on a cave-in. They're more than happy to believe in the stupidity of outsiders. The Tacades will be back for their weapons in the future, but next time they'll be more careful about it. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, anything to do with the Nowhere Inn? I don't think so. What about the Village Green? Take a relaxing stroll? Ah, we reduce some terror. Great, okay. And we ran out of welcome, so good time to go. Oh! We need two more of these? Five barrels of hours, or five barrels of unseasoned hours. And how many more do we... Wait, no, perhaps not. How many more do we need? Deliver two more. We'll do three more. Actually, let's do two more. Just in the off chance we get some more loot where we're going now. There we go. Great. Okay! Good stuff, good stuff. Oh, wait, we got a trophy. Thank you for reminding me. We, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure we got at least one trophy for the hunting club. I wonder if we can turn it in now. It was here, here, nope. Oh wait, we've worn out our welcome. We can trade some gossip. 
We have like a bunch of those. Yeah, we got six still. Is it the Nowhere Inn or... Nowhere Inn. Head upstairs. Deliver a can Cantankery Trophy. Nice. 50 experience and 100 sovereigns. Okay. We, need, we still need to get a Chorister B Trophy and a Scribe Spinster Trophy. Cool. Go kill some bees? Oh, we're gonna. We're gonna. Alright, so now we need to go this way. We got five supplies and five fuels. So we are sitting pretty. And we got full crew and help. Oof! This is, this is one of the most well-supplied expeditions we've ever left on. <laughs> Oh, iron wood. Man, we gotta get that drill. Oof. We're definitely gonna get that uh that one that lets us have two slots so I can have the cargo slot and the drill. I am missing so much money not being able to mine. And I like money, and I like gold. I like gold! Is it getting dark? Oh my. Yeah, apparently we're going in deep. Hold on to your butts. Uh, you should be able to have the drill and the butcher as tier two green. Butchery adds four, four hold as well. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Oh, uh, Nuriel, go ahead and fire it off. Guys, I need to run downstairs for like just a minute. I'll be back in one second. Keep your eyes on chat. Something is coming through here in just a second. Back in just a minute. All right. Woo! Let's go. Oh, great giveaway. This is an awesome one. Breast Edge was fantastic. Okay. We got plenty of supplies, so we can send out lots of bats. Oh! Oh! Have we not been? We haven't been there. Oh, hell yeah. What is this port? Gish with a 21 months, big badass banana, Arthur Joe Holt, Mystic Max, and Exploding Poodle. Thank you for the subs. Good, Good show, show to you, friends. friends. Thank you, guys. Man, like a ton of subs just back to back. My lord. Thank you, guys. Lucarkia, I know, and I'm never not going to. Dude, what is this place? Somerset Camp?
Crater's Wood is a sprawling, secluded forest on the edge of the Reach. Few venture beneath its gloomy bows, and legend speaks of a king who sleeps under the burrows at the wood's heart. Cool. The wood's edge. We can gain verdant seeds. You may only perform one of these actions a fortnight. Ooh, a failure. We lost a crew? Oh. The quiet verge by a gushing, gurgling stream is adorned with flowers as bright as Navaratine, Navaratine gems. Your knees are soon green with grass stains as you probe the delicate flowers in search of seeds. Your crew assists wandering the fringes of the forest in search of flora. A stoker pulls you away from your work. A crew member is missing. They heard a woman's voice from deeper in the wood and ventured further in. They do not return. Whoa. Okay. Campfire. Excuse me. Three figures draped in scholar's robes huddle around a campfire. They are arguing about kings. A banner in the colors of Somerset, London's university most respectable college gleams in the firelight. As you approach, the discussion dies. One of the scholars, a woman with a fierce expression, stands up. Only scholars should be here. Are you one? Oh. Perhaps a gift would persuade them to let you enter the camp. They look wretched camped out here. The vituperative classicist compares your offering with the burnt toast and the wan tea they have been suffering on. Suffering on. Well, all right, I suppose. The woman is a vituperative classicist. Her companions, a dismal paleographer, a forlorn young man, and a feckless theologian, a handsome youth with an easy smile. They explain that they are here to enter the regent's grave, where they believe a sleeping king lies buried. They do not agree as to the king's identity. Unfortunately, the college has cut our funding, the classicist explains. Speak to us if you'd be interested in helping. Okay. How can I help? Your inquiry introduces a rare spirit of cooperation in the scholars. The last expedition into the woods found a document written in the correspondence. It contained directions to a place called the Stuart's Font, the theologian explains. Alas, that is all it needs to break their alliance. The paleographer begins to argue that the Stuart was a chief position of Charlemagne's household. But the Stuart was a chief position in Charlemagne's household. The classicist makes a pointed reference to an honest husband. The theologian's smile is forced. If you could find the font, it would be an immense boon to my work. There are sputters of protestation. Our work. You can begin expeditions from expeditions into the deep of wood. Okay. Oh, Lord. So we can talk to all of them and ask them about their theory. I wonder if this is actually a puzzle. Hmm. I want to see what else is here, though. We'll, we'll come back here and talk to these guys if we need to in a little bit here. Okay. The Somerset Camp. The shadow of the borrow falls over the camp a mournful wail carries on the wind. Oh, 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 this is, this is, where, okay, the Somerset camp is where we were. That was the bonfire. Okay. Uh, what is the parting glade? Hunt for creatures with the cryptozoologist. The cryptozoologist grabs your arm. Look there! And indeed, deep in the woods where little light can penetrate, you see a shape, hunched over, covered with hair. The cryptozoologist digs into her backpack and pulls out a blowgun. Tranquilizer, she explains, fitting an ungainly telescopic sight on top of it. She just put a scope on a blowgun. The dart strikes her target. With a howl of protest, it collapses. You follow the cryptozoologist to the unconscious body of a bearded man in a thick coat. <laughs> Undaunted, she heads back into the woods in search of a discovery that won't smear as much upon waking. You leave her before she can mistake you for her quarry. Wow. Okay. Write a port report. <laughs> okay. Explore the glade. There's no one else here at the present, but there are signs of recent passage. Okay. All right. We can do expeditions now. Whoa. What? Uh. 
You must first decide how many of your crew you wish to take with you on your expedition. The more you take, the likelier your success, but at a risk of losing them all? <sighs> what? Oh, hey, Martini, don't you ever worry about it. And thank you so much for your time, Martini. Thank you. Thankfully, cumulative subs are here. So if, it, if that ever changes, you can just pick up right from where you left off. And thanks again, Martini. We're doing it live. This is happening. Prepare an expedition to the, to the Stewart's font. The scholars share individually what they know. Their transcriptions of the correspondence differ significantly and they refuse to work together on a single translation. Still, it should be enough to get you in the general area of the font. Okay. You emerge into a field of purple flowers, bright as new bruises. Captain, the stoker's voice is anxious. Can you hear them? Something whispers from beneath the petals. What do they know? Maybe you can learn. Oh, thanks. Boop. Success! The scent of flowers is sweet but sour, like that of rotten raspberries. The smell overpowers your nostrils as the voices overwhelm your ears, filling them with constant babble. Your crew joins you in the long grass, wandering through the cacophony of flowers. Petals open tiny mouths. They whisper directions, only half in a language you speak. They tell you of groves and graves, the treacheries which happen, the defiance, the kingdoms overthrown. Eventually, they even tell you the way to leave. Long shadows move through the silver trees ahead. There's a mournful howl. Someone sounds hungry, as Stoker tries to joke. A low, low growling comes from behind you. The beasts have your scent. Hide from the beasts. Better safe than sorry. Oh! 80%?! You slip out the path into the depths of the woods, where the great trees bend their bows and conceal you. But in the trader's woods, you're betrayed. A wind whips through the forest, brushing the canopy aside. You live to see your crew slaughtered. You do not stay to watch them be devoured. Their deaths have brought you a chance to, bought you a chance to flee. Enter the Stewart's font. You scale down the wet rock face and into the cave. It is several moments before your eyes adjust to the light. The cavern is not natural. The walls are covered with bronze wood and studded with navaratine gemstones. Driven in too deep to remove. Distant starlight from the cave mouth reflects off the stones, filling the caves with radiance. Towards the back of the cave, you find a silver seal the size of a crown and a curved crescent blade. Correspondence is scored on the blade's battered metal. It is too large to move, but you record the sigils. Perhaps one of the scholars will be able to translate. You take the seal. Okay. A cluster of scholars have set... Oh, now we're back at the camp. All right. Let's speak to the feckless theologian. Ask for the theologian's help in translating the sigils on... Oh! You will only be able to consult one scholar. They do not share their findings with rivals and guard their research jealously. Oh! So we have to pick. He's delightful to even ask. According to the Legenda Aurora, St. John is sleeping somewhere, waiting for the coming of the Antichrist, which would mean the end of the world. Okay, I don't think it was the Antichrist for it to be a sickle. Towards the back of the cave, you find a silver seal the size of a crown and a curved crescent blade. Oh? Maybe that's a scythe? Hmm. Okay. So what that was that was the feckless theologian. What is the vituperative classicist? What does he think? Isn't it obvious? She rolls her eyes. Fine. I'll tell you what I told the academic senate. The high wilderness is heaven. Not as the church conceives it, but as the Sumerians did, a place of stars and chaos and impossible powers. Inanna, the queen of heaven, entered the underworld in search of her husband and was trapped for a time. That is the myth. No, I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it's a trapped goddess. What about you? What do you think it is? I will not waste breath on the undeserving. Wait, what? Okay. 
return to camp. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 whoops, my bad. We're good, we're good. Uh, so hers is... It's a little strange, I admit. You certainly won't find this in Einhard, but there are legends that say a great king did not leave his people on death and instead sleeps in a barrow, waiting for there to be an hour of need. You query his people. I do not forget that we are British, but is our queen out of German parentage? I think it's this guy. I think it's this guy. What do you guys think? I kind of want to give it to this dude. I'm doing it live. The dismal paleo paleographer grabs your notes eagerly. He is swift to an initial translation. This is a gift for service. Carolingian kings gave gifts, spoils, riches, offices for loyalty. He pauses. Hey, what's this? The paleographer labors over your notes for several hours. At last, he rises from the desk. I think this was given as an office, tamer of the king's bower. But that's no position I know of. It gave authority over the giggling place, located somewhere deep. Do you have a map? It would be easier. He scrawls markings on your map. Another expedition? To the giggling place? Wait, what? Really? All right, hold on. Can I buy stuff here? Oh, thank God. Okay. Um. Wait, what do you what do you sell here? Hey, bronze wood at one thirty five. We could sell that for one seventy five. That's like forty gold a pop. Yeah, I think we'll do. We're gonna we're gonna have to go back and buy more fuel anyway. So we'll do that before we leave. Uh, you. Small, yes. And now... The giggling place. Alright, here we go. Oh, lord. Once again, the scholars wave cheerily as you prepare your crew for another venture under the whispering bows of the trader's wood. <sighs> Chef guy! Best of vibes to you, dude. Best of vibes to you. That is great to hear. That's great to hear. Okay. We're going to listen to the voices. 82% chance. Okay, good. We got a sky story and we're not dead. Great. Uh-oh. The ground gives way to a bog, gray and fetid, to a newly slain corpse. As a newly slain corpse. It burps lazily. The marsh reads susurate, susurate, growing in volumes as you approach. There is English amidst the polyphony. Names, yours and those of your crew. Search for another route. Oh, God. Uh, Lord. The wood extends for miles, but so do does the bog. It is hours before you find a passable clearing. A glade of emerald hue nestled between the corpse of silver trees that shiver and sigh like consumptives. Your crew follow your lead, hanging close by your torchlight. You keep up a count, checking the numbers of your crew as you go. Not everyone leaves this silvered wood. Enter the giggling place. Within the dell, the laughter becomes cacophonous. Your crew must cover their ears as you press forward through the dripping undergrowth. White ferns whisper as they brush against your heads, your hands. Ahead, you can hear the lowering, lowing of beasts. The air is cold as the grave. This is a terrible idea. You inch forward as the laughter crescendo is washing over you. A copse of trees, gray as a rainstorm, lies ahead. It blocks the rest of the dell from sight, but is the only way forward. Go alone. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Your crew are loyal and protest, but their, their relief is palpable. You stride through the trees, the distant starlight dappling their gray leaves silver. You are greeted with laughter as bright and insistent as a blade at the throat. It emerges from the dell, which descends to a gap in the trees. A canopy of dripping leaves conceals what lies ahead. Laughter, high and mirthless, can be heard very close by. You must go forward. Enter the hollow. At the very bottom of the dell is a brook. The water bobbles and chuckles, murmurs and giggles. A bronze seal gleams just under the surface. As you reach to take it, three faces are reflected in the water next to yours. 
You are being watched by a three-headed fox, the size and color of a polar bear. It speaks, but with your voice, your vocal patterns stolen in service of its speech. Mourn not the wild trees, nor the slain servant. Open the silent burrows. The fox flees into the wood. Your throat aches. I lost a stat? But I gained a vision of the heavens? What? Speak to this dude again. Mm. Wait, do I want to talk to someone else? Oh my lord. Uh. Oh lord. Um. <laughs> 